Welcome to this Excel stat chart video on how to group samples using key means clustering in Excel stat. To start clustering samples, you first need to open the dialog box of the function key means clustering. Go to the menu analyzing data and click on the option key means clustering. Once the dialog box is opened, Select the data ranging from column C, net domestic migration, to column H, population age inferior to 65. We don't select column B as we are interested in demographic dynamics. The last column is not selected either as it is fully correlated to the column H. We don't want to weight nor the samples nor the variables so we don't take the options column or row weights. The clustering criterion is the determinant W. This criterion is not too sensitive to effects of scale. Our data are quite versatile in terms of scale, so it is very appropriate to use that one. The selection contains the names of the variables, so we leave the option column labels ticked. We can add the row labels and select the column with the names of the states. Finally, we change the number of classes to 4. The last thing to do in the general tab is to decide where the result should be displayed. We select the option sheet to get them in a new sheet of the current workbook. We can now move on to the tab Options. We are clustering the states, so the option Cluster Rows is the right one to use. For the initial partition, we don't have any information on the cluster, so we leave the option Random selected. We increase the number of repetitions to 50 to increase the stability and quality of the results. The default stopping conditions are good for this example, so we leave them like that. We can now move on to the tab Missing Data. To get a warning when there are missing data in the selections, we keep the default option Do not accept missing data. In the Outputs tab, we can select all the results to be computed and go to the next tab Charts. The only optional chart is the evolution of the criterion we selected. In this case, the determinant W. When everything is set, we can launch the computations by clicking on the OK button. The next window gives you the opportunity to check that the selections are correct. Once you have verified this, click on the Continue button. The results are displayed in a new sheet. After the summary statistics, you get a table showing the result for the optimization process for the within class variance for the 50 repetitions. We then obtain the statistics for each interaction for the within class variance and some criteria, with the plot of the evolution of the determinant W. The next table gives you the decomposition of the variance for the optimal classification. The variance within class represents 30% of the total variance, again 70% for the variance between classes. The following tables give results about the class centroids. For example, we can look into the distances between the class centroids. Notice that the distances vary between 13.4 and 58.3 for two class centroids. The next results are the result by class. So the states are attributed to their classes. We have enlightened the state closer to the centroids for each class. Finally, we have the results by object, which is a table containing the class for each state and the distance to the centroid. Notice that some states are quite far from the centroid. Thank you for watching this video.